Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Ben, and this is part two for our Flappy Cat tutorial, where we're going to build an entire game that is a parody of Flappy Bird. So um, let me show you what we did in the last video real quick. We made it so that um, your cat can fly every time you click the mouse, but it doesn't really look like it's moving, and we did put the background in but nothing else really happens. You can't die or anything like that. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a game end script. Well actually, I lied. Let's not do that first. The first thing we're going to do is create our pillar. So we're going to call this one object pillar bottom and we're going to give it uh, the bottom pillar sprite and we're going to give it a step event and all this step event is going to do, drag over some code, it, let's see, x minus equals 4. So we're just going to move it to the left with a speed of 4, and we do want to destroy it if it goes outside the room. So if x is less than or equal to negative 64, instance underscore destroy parentheses semicolon and then it'll end our blocks so we're just checking to see if it's gone off the screen to the left side and the reason we're doing negative 64 we're giving ourselves a little leeway because if we did zero there it would destroy right when it got to the right when it got to the edge and that would look kind of weird so we're giving ourselves a little leeway now we're going to actually duplicate this object and, ob and rename the duplicated one object pillar top. And we're going to grab a pillar top one. And it's going to have the same code. So that's awesome. Okay, now we need to make a pillar creator. It's the god of pillars because it's going to create all of our pillars for us. Object pillar creator. I hope I'm spelling pillar right. I think I am, but it looks funny to me right now. Okay, so we're going to have a create event, and inside of this create event, we're going to set an alarm because we want it to create these at a certain timing, right? We'll create some right off, but first thing we're going to do is set the alarm, and we'll use alarm zero because you have multiple alarms that you can use, but we want to use zero. We're going to set it to 48. And then we're going to create a variable called height, and we're going to set height to choose 108, 72, 90, 128. So all that does is it uh, the function choose chooses between all of the values that you pass it. So we're going to pass it 108, 72, 90, and 128. And this is going to be the height that we create the pillars at. Actually, the bottom pillar and the top pillar will just create above it. So this height, I, the reason I have these numbers is because I've built this before, so I know that these numbers look good. You can mess around with them if you don't like them, but I think those ones look, look good, so that's the reason I chose them. And now we're going to create these pillars. Instance, create. Um, and then for the X, we're going to do room width plus uh, 64 sorry, plus 32, and then we're going to do height for our y position, and then we're going to do object, pillar, bottom. We're going to create another one, instance, create, room, width, plus 32, height, minus 64, object, pillar, top. Now this may this might not be the most efficient way of doing this, but this is a small game, so <laughs> I don't think we're ever going to have to worry about lag by creating and destroying objects. Another way you can do it is just to have them reappear back on the other side every time they go off the screen, but we're going to do it this way. So that looks good. Now we just need to set our, our alarm. In fact, you can just duplicate this create event for the alarm because it's going to do the exact same thing. It's going to reset itself set a new height, and create new pillars. 
So come into our room and we're going to put our pillar creator in here and we're going to save and we're going to run the game. See what happens. Okay, so you can see we're creating pillars and we can go through them. But the thing is we can also go through them this way because we don't have any collisions set up right now. So that makes the game kind of easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I want to make sure that we got this. Okay, in the first video we did set those collision boundaries, so that's good. Um, we can just leave the pillars how they are. So uh, let's write a script, and we'll call this script game end, because we're going to change this later, and we don't want to have to go in and change the code in all of the different spots. Game end. And all it's going to do is going to end the game. In fact, let's not call it script game end, we'll call it script game end over because later we're going to change this so it takes you to a high score screen but for now that's what we're going to do so let's create a new collision in our cat object and we're going to create a collision with the top pillar or the bottom pillar and we're going to run our game over script and then we're going to duplicate that event for a collision with the top pillar so we've got the top and the bottom and now they both kill you if you run into them. So let's run the game one more time. Woo. Oh, see, you can see I uh, hit the pillar and it ended the game. So that's awesome. Let's uh, let's try something really fast because we've got quite a bit of our game done now, actually. So. Uh, there's a couple things we need to do really quickly. Let's go back into our backgrounds And if you remember our f background one is actually a foreground But for some reason it makes it so we can't see any of our objects in the room I think this is only a glitch in game maker for Mac <laughs> I have never had this happen before to me in game maker for Windows so But we're gonna select that to, uh, we're gonna select that so it's visible for a second just so that we can test our game a little bit better. And then in our cat object, go into the step event. We need uh we need to we need to end the game. We need to do a game over when the cat has touched the ground. So we're gonna do if y is greater than or equal to 132. And once again, I've got that number because I've built this game before and that one looked good to me. That's right about when you hit the ground then we're going to run our game over script script game over okay now if you save your game and run it again you'll see <laughs> our ground just cuts off there okay so I forgot um, go back to uh, backgrounds and make sure that it tiles in the x direction so tile horizontally just check this little one here Okay, let's press uh, play one more time. And it's not tiling, and the reason is because I accidentally tiled background zero. I apologize. Background one, which is the, actually our foreground, we want to tile that one. Oh my gosh, I'm going to die right away. And you can see now, and I lost. So let's try one more time, and you can see that if I let the cat just drop and hit the ground, you lose as well. So it's actually pretty hard. <laughs> the timing that we've got, you can actually set this to be a little bit easier than what we have it at right now. Um, and I think all you have to do is change the vertical speed yeah, because that is really tricky. That's like as it's going to be really hard. Maybe you want it really hard, but I think if you change this vertical speed to four instead of five, um,
yeah, it makes it a little easier. So if you want to make your game really hard, make that vertical speed 5. If you want it to be a little easier, make it 4. I'm going to actually leave it at 4 for now, so you can make that call whether you want it to be 4 or 5, but I'm going to leave it at 4. So That's the end of this part of the tutorial. In the next part, we're going to, we're going to create the menu screen and create our high score screen. And I think that'll be the end because we'll have, we'll have the full game. We'll have the menu, we'll have the game, we'll have the score and the high score. And the player can continue to play, restart, whatever they want to do. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate your feedback. As always, make sure and like this video and share it with your friends. Uh, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and I put my Tumblr account up as well. I'm working on my own game right now called Grainmore. Uh, most of my Tumblr is going to be about that game. I, I'm not going to post tutorial videos really on my Tumblr account. So if you want to just find out about my game, you can follow me on Tumblr. And you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow.